Okay, I'm going to record narration because my mom likes that sort of thing. And since she's the only one watching, I might as well give her what she wants. Well, Emmett's in the background. So here I'm just making sure my camera's following me. My nice brand new camera. I call it Pivot, but I don't know what the um, how to actually pronounce the name. But it follows and tracks my horse. As you can see, it'll zoom in as I get further away. It'll zoom out as I get closer, and it will follow me around. So we're not having to squint to try to see me. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Excuse me. So here I'm just walking around. Nothing much going on here. Just warming up his muscles, asking him to march, not letting him get too lazy. Astra, my dog, is following us around. I put these cones up to try to make some sort of arena, just to have a space that we're riding in. And then I realized how... Um, how bad our lines were it's so much easier to not focus on lines when I don't have those cones up but now that those cones are up I'm like oh my gosh I am so wiggly um anyway here we are starting to work on some halt transitions he is so bad at the halt um I'm kind of at a loss of what to do so I was just kind of practicing trying a couple things trying to sit up taller trying to um pull my center of gravity down, trying to half halt before I actually asked for a halt. Um, as you can see, he always gets wiggly. He won't stop straight. Um, he throws his head up and he really pulls on that bit. So I really try to break up the pressure in my hands. So I never pull back. What I do is just tighten up the pressure and then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle on both hands. So it's just breaking up the pressure instead of just a constant pullback because that means nothing to him. Um, so that that one there was a little bit better. Um, this one was not, not so good because he popped his head up. And so I'm just kind of brainstorming, trying to figure out how to make these halts better. I've never had a horse not listen to my seat. Um, I take a deep breath in, I half halt and deep breath out. And I tell him, whoa, and I wiggle, wiggle, wiggle on the reins, and he braces against that bit and stops like that with his nose out. Um, so I'm going to have to brainstorm on that. They did get better as I was working on them here. Um, I was feeling a bit tired, so I didn't want to do too much trotting, but then I ended up doing a lot of trotting later on, but... Um, I was like, you know, let's do a long walk out. And I'm like, well, while I'm walking, I still be working. That one was so much better, so I gave him a pat. Every time he stopped, I told him, told him good boy, because that's what I wanted. And I do talk to him. I said, whoa, easy. Ah, look at that. He just likes to brace and then go sideways, trying to evade the pressure. It's so frustrating because your first impression on that judge is coming straight down center line and halting at X. And so I really need to get this down before we go to our first show because that is our first impression on the judge. And he can do all of the next, you know, the whole test right and not get his halt. And that's just going to make me sad. I guess that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. So... It's just so fitting, right, that I have a horse that won't stop correctly. <laughs> and that's that's something that's important to me is that first, first impression on the judge. So here I started doing something different. Because he was bracing against my hand, I asked him to halt, and then I held my hand, waited for him to give in to the pressure, and then walked back on, just like that. So you saw that I, I held my hand steady, you saw him drop his head, that's him giving into the pressure, and then us going forward. So I'm trying to tell him that when I, my hand goes on, it doesn't mean you brace against it. It means that you come round. Gosh, that was horrible. See, my body there was... 
No, don't walk. Wait until he comes around, and then we can walk on. A little bit better. That halt was horrible, though. Um, so I was like, well, if our halt isn't that good, that will come with time. And then I was like, I'm just going to worry about my walk on because we stop. And then we need to have a nice walk on. Oh, he just keeps creeping. He's a creepy crawly. Good. That was really good. So you can tell when he comes around and he is actually using his body. Because when I ask him to walk on, he'll start with his back leg first. So when they halt and when they walk forward, they should walk forward starting on the hind leg first. Um, so every time he collected himself correctly and was using his back, he was walking off with that hind end. And he started doing it that last halt there he did. And I think he does on this one because he's starting to get that part. He's still not stopping as well as I'd like. And then, <laughs> interesting. So I'm now asking him to come around in his walk as well, and I'm trying to get him to move out, move off my inside leg into that halt. There, that was really good. He came around and he stepped up with that hind leg. That was good. So here I'm trying to put my inside leg on, asking him to move over just a little bit of a leg yield into the halt, see if that helped. It clearly didn't. He put his head back down. We walked forward. Um, he was popping his head up when he walked forward to avoid using his back there. And so this time I think I'm a little bit more firm about I want your head down when we walk off. Head down. There. He still popped his head up, but he, he did start trekking with that hind uh, leg. You see he's starting to improve his walk a little bit here. Gosh, still bracing up when we halt. That was better, though. See, he's coming down sooner when we stop. So my idea is that eventually he'll come down through his halt instead of just right after. Um, there I had him stand a little bit because he was now anticipating my walk. So I was like, no, you're going to stay halted until I'm ready for you to walk. We're going to stay halted. And then when I'm ready. Yes, very good. See how he used his back and he started with that hind leg first. So they do get better. Um, not the halting part, but the um, collection in the halt and then walking off, pushing on that hind leg first becomes better. See, he's still creepy crawly. See that time he popped his head up and pulled with his front leg. He wasn't collected there in his back. It happens. He's still weak. He's still gaining uh, back muscle. The more muscle he has, the less he'll start to avoid. And I'm hoping we'll improve our halts a little bit too. It's a little bit um, behind the bit there. I wait. I don't want him anticipating. But then because I waited, waiting for him to stop anticipating my walk, then I didn't really ask for the roundness there. So he did just kind of bulge forward. With that front leg. See how he came right down in the halt. So he is getting it. He's like this is where my head is supposed to be. I'm like no I didn't say walk yet. <laughs> Look at him creep. He's such a creepy crawly. Look at him. <laughs> Just halt and stand still. It's so funny because he will stand perfectly still if he thinks I'm going to get off of him. But when I ask him to halt and he knows I'm not getting off, he'll just do that. But if I halted and like moved my body like I'm going to swing my leg over, he'll stop. There we go. So he's learning that when I stop, I want him to collect. And so he's bringing his head down. So, I mean, little wins. We're still going to do it. That one was a little better. He does halt square every time. Or most, yeah, most every time he stops square. Okay, so that time I was done doing my halts. And so we're going to do a little trotting. Here, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And then I decide, okay, I'm going to do a figure eight. 
So then I come around. This is the middle of my arena. My camera is not really positioned to be right in the middle um, because I wanted to get it to where the sun was hitting him so we can see him nice and well and he's not in the shadow. So I did a 20 meter, a roughly 20 meter circle. I'm not in an arena and I, I do have my, um, my cones out there is supposed to mark it, but you know, it's still hard to kind of gauge what 20 meter circles is with just four corners. I do my best though. And then this one's more like a 15 meter circle. So I'm coming in every time I change direction, I'm going to come in on the circle. And then now I'm going to do a 15 meter circle this way. Um, he looks like he's a little off here. I think it's just because his feet need to be done. So I'll be assessing him. His feet are, is getting done this week. And so, um, I'll be assessing him after that and see if we need to call a vet out for, have him have a lameness exam. So then we're going inside that 15 meter circle. So probably 12 meters, I don't know, 12 meter circle. And then we're going to change direction and do that again. So I was going to do spirals, and that's leg yielding in to the circle, making that circle smaller, and then leg yielding out into the circle and making that circle bigger. The reason why I didn't do that is because we're only leg yielding at the walk, and they're still not that great. I don't feel like he's responsive enough to my leg to be able to start doing it at the trot. I want it more consistent. Now I'm doing a 10-meter circle. Um, and then 10 meter circle to the other way. Um, so instead of doing that, I still wanted to do the little circles and the big circles. The reason is, is because to do a littler circle, you're challenging your horse's balance and suppleness. And so I wanted to do that, but because he's not really good at his leg yields yet, I do it like this. Um, it's kind of an interpretation of what's called the, um, snowman is doing a, big circle and then like a 15 meter circle the opposite direction and then a 10 meter circle I'm kind of making a snowman in your arena so this is my interpretation um so and then I did um I decided to do two 10 meter circles each way and it's so hard for him he's trying his best he is moving off of my leg he is bending that neck He's trying, <laughs> but you can tell this is very difficult for him. And then once he does the two 10 meter circles both ways, then I go out on that 20 meter circle and I'm like, look at how easy this is. And he's like, wow, this is really easy. And he's coming round and he looks great. And we call this comparison shopping. <laughs> we go on a 10 meter circle and we're like, look at how hard this is. Look, and then we go back on our 20 meter circle and we say, look at how easy this is. And the horse really responds to it. It's like, wow, this is so much easier keeping my balance on these big circles. And I think I do two, um, two 20 meter circles each way. Yeah, I do. So I just do one more. Um, so this is like, gosh, this is probably a little bit harder than he should be doing right now. Um, it was a challenge for us for sure um, because he's not very consistent in his neck. He is still building those back muscles, um, but this is just a huge supplementing exercise um, because they're going from a wider bend in the body to a more, uh, more bend in the body, more bend in the neck, really moving off of that inside leg. So then I practice a halt and it's terrible. It's pretty bad. Oh no, I was just walking. Okay. So then I decided, okay, I thought I, I'm, I am going to halt and it was bad. So then I started walking and then I walked a 10 meter circle both directions um, to just remind him where my leg is. But I really like this because um, your, how much leg you use and how much inside rain you use, I mean outside rain, how much leg and outside rain is what dictates your circle. And so each time we changed direction, I was making the circle smaller. So my inside leg and my outside rain was telling him this is what a smaller circle is. So it's really putting him on the aids and making him clearly understand what size of circle I want depending on my aids. So I did have him halt there 
and he put his head down, but then I looked at the video, and I was like, wow, he didn't even halt for, like, a second. He was just, like, he kind of half halt, right? <laughs> he kind of, he thought he was going to stop, and then he just kept going, so I, I should have had him stand there for a little bit, but I guess I was just happy with that halt beyond my other halts. Um, so that's all I did with him today, that day. Um, that was Christmas Day, actually, so it was yesterday. Because today we went out on a trail ride. Because we were feeling a little, little stuffy, I guess. In my very open arena, but feeling stuffy. We're like, we need to get out and get some energy and some motivation. If you saw, I, I would definitely say he was really lagging here. I would have loved more energy. And here I'm telling him, I'm like, when I put my leg on, you should move. And you saw he kind of sped up there. Uh, because in the trot, he was really sucking back and it was, he was not listening to my leg very well. Um, but I wasn't that concerned about it because I was concerned about other things, but really I should have been more concerned about his rhythm because if his rhythm and tempo isn't there, then it's really hard to know if we're really supple. Those first three parts of the training pyramid is very important. So no matter what you do, you should check those three things, which is your rhythm and tempo. And then on top of that is your um, impulsion and then your connection. Maybe it's connection and then impulsion for God. But those three things. So we did not have a very good temp. Well, maybe our tempo was good, but we did not have any impulsion there. And But I was working on the connection part. This is my leg. This is the size circle I want. And so I was working on him understanding the aids. And that's what the connection is. Is, is he listening to my aids? Is he following my direction? Are we um, supple? So... In, in our connection with our aid. So that's what our goal was today, was to be like, this is the size circle I want you to do based on my body position, my leg, my rein, inside leg to outside rein, telling them the size. So now I'm going to do a couple, uh, I think I did just a couple zigzags. I'm just trying to get them off my inside leg. Or maybe I just changed direction. Yeah. It's really interesting because I did see some off steps going to the left, but then he's really stiff going to the right. And then it's funny because when we work on Canner, he has trouble picking up his left lead, even though he's stiff going to the right. And I just think that's really funny. Um, I'm sure if I was more into the mechanics of the horse that would make sense to me but right now I'm just thinking about that and I'm like he's stiff to the right but he can canter on the left that doesn't make any sense to me no he can't canter on the left even though he's stiff to the right you'd think he wouldn't be able to canter on the right because he's stiff to the right so anyway now we're just walking we're just chilling got my hand down <laughs> I'm just doing one rain. We're just neck raining here. You know, it's funny because I'm riding and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was a lot of work. And I'm like huffing and puffing. And I think he is too because we're so out of shape. And then I watched the video and I was like, wow, that wasn't a very long ride at all. I was like, I barely did anything. But um, we're we're doing what's right for us, and we're listening to our bodies. Me listening to my body, and I am pregnant, so I need to go at whatever pace my body's comfortable with. And if we just did that little exercise there, and that was comfy, you know, I shouldn't push it more than that. And especially him, too. He's coming off of, like, gosh, it's been like a year without working. And we're getting back into it, riding three days a week, trying to build muscle and things. And so, you know, we need to listen to his body too and not push him too hard either. And I think he did very good in that uh, 
that exercise there. For the most part, he was consistent in his head and his body and listening to my aids. On the right rein, it was a little bit, um, he wasn't very supple on that side. He was uh, bracing against my right rein, and I didn't like that, but... He's the cutest little boy ever, isn't he? Just perfect. I did cut his mane today, and it probably looks really bad. <laughs> but I did the best I could. I was like, it'll grow out before the next show, and then I can try again and be a little bit better about it. He's such a good boy. Um, so my goals, I don't know how much longer I have on this video, but my goals for this year for him is to work on those canter transitions and work on his consistency in his body and his neck. He pops up his neck a lot. I'd like to see more consistency of him holding that proper position and using his back. All right, I'm coming up to my camera. I'm going to hop off and turn it off. So anyway, those are my two goals, and today he definitely was more consistent in his head, so that is on our way to our goal. All right, bye. Eventually I'll turn off the camera here.